You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass on, buddy. About 83% of you guys are not subscribed. Subscribing, clicking that like button, and commenting all help me out a lot in doing what I really want to do. Thank you guys so much for all your support. What is going on, guys? Rogue TCG here bringing another Yu Gi Oh! TCG deck profile. You guys voted for it. I am responding. Here is Zombies. Uh, this is a little bit more of a control variant of Zombies, not necessarily the old variant where people would super poly into Nether Soul. But I did want to lean a little bit more into the win condition of Masterful Mayakashi Shiranui Saga. Uh, but I didn't want to do it the cheesy way. I didn't want to do it with Beatrice. I think that's a little bit forced and all that. So I wanted to do it the legit way. But I also wanted to play Zombies. So I built this deck. Uh, here is Zombie um, Mayakashi Shiranui Turbo. Uh, Turbo is a very generous term for it. Uh, we're playing five copies of it so there's a pretty decent chance we do open it however it's not a guaranteed chance but this deck does still have legs otherwise so that's enough yapping from me let's get into the profile starting off our list it's like any other zombie list we're on triple copies of unizombie allowing us to target a face up monster on field to pitch a card in order to increase that card's level by one also allowing us to target a face of monster on the field. Monsters you control can't attack except for zombies until the rest of the turn. Uh, and also we get to send a zombie from our deck to the graveyard and then increase that targeted monster's level. Uh, that secondary effect, incredibly strong. First effect, also really strong. Being able to discard cards in this deck is something that is really strong and that we want to be doing. We're on two copies of Shirinui Solitaire. It's number one, it's a Shirinui card and deck, uh, which is relevant for some of our extra deck cards. But also, it's a way to just get to Unizombie. So it's copies uh, four and five of Unizombie. We're not playing the six copy just because it loses really, really hard to Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring exactly. So there is that. We are on double copies of Necro World Banshee. It allows us to protect our zombie world while it's face up in the field. And it's a quick effect when it's in graveyard in order to banish itself to uh, basically just activate a zombie world straight from our deck or hand. So. Really strong stuff to just quick effect put a zombie world on a field. And this is one of the main cards if we don't open zombie world that we want to send to the graveyard with Unizombie. Speaking of cards we want to send to the graveyard with Unizombie, we're on double Mezuki. Allowing us to banish this card from our graveyard. Just target a zombie in our grave and just special summon it. Not a once per turn, so we're playing two of it. We're on one Gozuki. And this is basically like a mini Unizombie during the main phase. You can send a zombie on ignition from your deck to your grave. And if this card is sent to the grave, you can banish a zombie from your graveyard, except for Go, uh, Gozuki, to special a zombie from your hand. Now, this effect actually does come up. With certain cards like Changji to Spiridao, uh, Gozuki actually does come up, where you can banish the Changji in order to special summon itself. I mean, to special summon the Changji and to special summon a monster from hand. And just like that, you've gotten two materials worth of stuff on board. We are on one Mad Mauler, a card target that we want to send from deck to graveyard um, with either Unizombie or with Gozuki or some of the other cards we're going to be covering. It just allows us to target a high level zombie in our graveyard, special summon it, and uh, lower the level of the thing you targeted. Basically allowing you to make it easy uh, Synchro 6 if you target a level 6, which is the minimum level you can target. We have one glow bulb. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can banish it from your graveyard to add a level 5 or higher zombie from your deck to your hand. Or if you control zombie world, you can special summon that zombie. So we really want to be aiming for that secondary effect. We're on one Shang-Chi to Spear Deo. During our main phase, we can send a zombie from our hand or deck to the graveyard. Uh, that's an ignition effect. And if this card is banished, you can banish a zombie from your graveyard. Special summon this card, but ban uh, place it on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. So the main combo we want to do is go Shang-Chi to Spear Deo, send Mad Mauler. Then we want to synchro to another zombie that sends a zombie from deck to graveyard. Then we can send the Gozuki. We can activate the Gozuki effect to special summon a zombie from hand by banishing our uh, Shang-Chi. And then our Shang-Chi is going to trigger and special summon itself. So then we have three um, things on field in order to link off into theoretically our link three uh, Mayakashi Yukiona, the Icicle Mayakashi, if we don't have access to a synchro there, in order to turn on our masterful Mayakashi Shiranui Saga. But Chang Shi the Spear Deo is incredibly strong. Just another card to send cards from deck to grave is very needed in this deck. 
we're playing one copy of Al Ghul Mazeret, a zombie monster we can uh, a zombie monster we control to be destroyed by battle card effect. We can banish this card from our hand or graveyard instead. If this card uh, is banished from the hand or graveyard, we can special summon it in defense position. Then we can reduce its level by one, and we can use each effect of Al Ghul Mazeret once per turn. So functionally, as long as this guy's in rotation, he's perpetually protecting all of our cards once per turn. And he special summons himself as a chump blocker, so he's really quite decent. We're on two copies of Doom King Baylor Drussy. He's the focal point of the deck. Uh, during the standby phase, if there's a field spell on either player's field, you can special summon him. When a zombie monster activates their effects, you can activate one of two effects, either negate the effect that they activated, or we can banish a card from the uh, from the field or the graveyard. Uh, that doesn't mean just your opponents. If you activate a zombie effect, you can also just banish a card. However, with Zombie World, uh, one of our next cards, we'll, you'll see why that's so incredibly strong. And then for our last two monsters in the main deck that aren't hand traps, we're on one Yuki Mutsume, the Ice Mayakashi. Just allowing us to extend further if we actually did go into Yuki Ona, the Ice for Mayakashi, or Yuki Ona, the Absolute Zero Mayakashi. It allows us to extend a little bit more and send a zombie from deck to graveyard, which is quite nice. And then we are on one Eldritch the Golden Lord, because look at all these spells and traps we're running in this deck. We are on two zombie worlds. All monsters on the field and in the graveyards become zombie monsters. Neither player can tribute summon monsters except for zombie monsters. A really good situational floodgate. It turns on your Baylor Drussy. It lets you use its effects on your opponent's uh, cards. So it's really overall incredibly strong. And it's the central focus point of the deck because Banshee grabs it. Globe Bolt needs it on field. Baylor Drock would really prefer it being on field. So it's a really incredibly strong card that we do need to see. Next, for non-engine, we are on Double Link into the Brains. Uh, this card allows us to play around interaction on our Unizombie specifically, or our Gozu if you choose to normal summon it. So typically, that's like one of the major choke points of the deck, where Unizombie, if it gets uh, uh, Infinite Impermanence, uh, Effect Veilered, Ash Blossomed, one of those, you tend to just not really do too much during your turn, because Unizombie just gets all your value for you. Both Link into the Brains, if they have interacted with Unizombie, we can just special summon a different zombie from our hand, like Banshee, Baylor Drock, Mizuki, even Gozuki. Uh, any of our zombies is good to summon from our hand and then immediately send to the graveyard, so Link into the Brains fulfills its function there, and it allows us, go, allows us to go into Vampire Sucker, Dark to Dark, Tremor Gloomy, or in some situations, even Yuki Ona or some of the larger Links. Uh, next, we're on Double Forbidden Droplet. We're running monster spells and traps. Uh, we want to pitch our monsters to the graveyard, and this is really good going first or second for interaction, so really solid card. We're on one Called by the Grave to stop those aforementioned hand traps, everything but infinite impermanence. Uh, we're on one Foolish Barrow because we're a graveyard deck, and we want to send a specific card to the graveyard, namely Banshee, Mizuki, Glow Up, Bloom, any one of those. We're on one for one, again, to get that Globe Bloom on the field. You can also have another target now with Yuki Mutsume, the Ice Mayakashi. Speaking of Yuki Mutsume, it's searchable with a Mayakashi's Return, which allows us to search for any Mayakashi card except for itself. Uh, but Yuki Mutsume is the secondary card for it. The first card is going to be Ghost Meets Girls, a masterful Mayakashi Shiranui Saga. Well, let's, let's tribute to Mayakashi or Shiranui Synchro or Link and Locks. Uh, both players from special summoning monsters from anywhere except for the graveyard. Uh, we do this on our opponent's turn uh, during the draw phase, and we can still use Baylor Drock since he summons from himself from the graveyard. Uh, so this actually doesn't turn off our deck and its our interactions at all, since all of our interaction involve bringing stuff back from graveyard during our opponent's turn, really. So it's just an incredibly strong card that we really want to get off. That's why we're running essentially five copies of it in our deck, two of the actual card, and then three Mayakashi return. With that, if we do open the uh, Shirinui Saga, we can always add the Yuki Mutsume from deck to hand instead. We're on two Return of the Zombies, uh, basically allowing us to banish a zombie from the field and then special summon a zombie from the graveyard of the player who banished the zombie. So you can banish one of yours to recur a zombie from your grave, or you can banish your opponents to give them a shittier zombie from their graveyard. And then it also has a graveyard effect where you can shuffle a banished zombie uh, from your banishment into your deck to reset it, but this card's banished and it leaves the field. So really good, just always being able to get that recursive effect over and over again is really strong. And then for the last six cards in the main, we're on Triple uh, Ash and Triple Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion because you need our stuff from the graveyard to resolve. Uh, next, for our extra deck, we're on one Relinquished Anima. Uh, this is specifically for Glow Up Bloom and Yuki Mutsume, just being able to link those off and get them in graveyard, specifically more for Glow Up Bloom. We're on one Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy, because the only non-darks in our main deck is Eldlich, Yuki Mutsume, and Shirinui Solitaire, as well as 
Malazera, as well as, you know, Mizuki Gozuki. But again, a majority of our uh, main deck that is going to be on the field, namely Yuna Zombie, Mad Mauler, Baylor Dressy, uh, Chang Chi, the Spirit Deo, all those cards are all dark monsters. So the likelihood to have one dark monster rather than none is very, very small. We're on Devil Vampire Sucker. When a zombie special summoned from either graveyard to the field, we get to draw a card. Really strong stuff. It lets us tribute zombies our opponent controls if we choose to tribute summon. So ne necessarily going to come up, but it can come up in the case of like Shang Chi and stuff like that. Um, as well as, we do have an effect where we can target a zombie in our opponent's graveyard and bring it back to their field. That can trigger our draw, and we can use Baylor Drock to trigger off of our Sucker's draw effect to banish the card we just summoned to deny them any value that they may have gotten with that uh, draw one from our side. We're on one Yuki Ona, the Icicle Mayakashi, allowing us to negate the effects of a card uh, when it is summoned. And then quick effect allowing us to banish itself from the graveyard to special summon a zombie sinker that's banished from our graveyard. It's pretty um, middling, in my opinion. It's really good when you're going second and really good for recursion. However, it's mostly in here for a generic Link 3, just needing 2 plus zombies for the Masterful Mayakashi Shirinui Saga. So this is one way we can get to that. We have one Vampire Fascinator, allowing us to Link Climb a little bit, but locking us into zombies, also allowing us to break our opponent's board. And one Access Code Talker in order to break the boards and kill our opponents, as well as one Yuki Ona, the Absolute Zero Mayakashi. Needs 2 plus zombies as a Link 4. You can only control one of the Yuki Ona, negate any of the activated effects of your opponent's banished monsters, kind of relevant. If a monster is special summoned from your graveyard or a monster effect is activated in the graveyard, you can target one of those face-up monsters, you can target a face-up monster in the field, choose Detect Zero, and if you negate its effects, use each effect of Yuki Ona the Absolute Zero Mayakashi once per turn. Basically translating our things that special summon zombies from our graveyard into negates is really strong. Baylor Drock already does that, but Yuki Ona is just another layer of that. We're on two copies of Mortal Dragons, a level 6 Synchro, and you need a tuner and non-tuner. During the main phase on ignition, we can send a zombie from our deck to the graveyard, and then this guy modulates his levels. And then if a zombie is destroyed by battle walls in the graveyard, we can choose to special summon it from our graveyard, but banish it and leaves the field. So pretty good as a chump blocker to make sure we stay alive. We're on one Shirinui Squire Saga. This is another target for our Masterful Mayakashi Shirinui Saga. However, it's a really good going second tool, allowing us to banish a fire from our graveyard. To destroy a spell and trap on the field or banish a zombie to make all our monsters gain 300. If we banish Sir Chirinui Solitaire, we do get both, so that is a nice little bonus. Um, so there is that. We are running one Skeletal Dragon Felgrand, allowing us to banish a card when it is summoned, um, as well as being able to quick effect if a monster summoned from the graveyard. We get to negate the effects of a monster on the field. Really strong stuff. Red Eyes Zombie Dragon Lord is actually the quick effect, the one that brings back cards from your graveyard in the quick effect. Really good uh, recursion tool and way to swarm the board. One Shirinui Sun Saga, if it's special summon, we can return zombie synchros from our graveyard or banishment to the extra deck and then pop cards our opponent controls equal to the number of cards returned. This doesn't target really strong and it can pop. Typically it's going to pop one or two. However, it can pop more in some scenarios. And then the last card in the extra deck is going to be a flex spot. It's going to be Psychic and Punisher. In our side deck, this is, uh, I would recommend actually siding these cards, Super Poly, Garura, Mud Dragon, and Draco Necro. Since we're a bit more of a control route and the main deck, we can't really, like, I chose not to run the Super Poly package. I don't know if it's necessarily correct. Uh, another card I was considering was Mayakashi Mayhem, just allowing us to get a lot of advantage off of Synchro Summoning cards and another target for return. However, it's a lot better when you're going first, so... This is more of like a cool little card if you want to do a kickflip on them. And then the last card, obviously, is going to be Rivalry of Warlords, since it works so well with Zombie World and locking your opponents out. Thank you guys so, so much for watching the video, in the case that you still are. There is a giveaway. You can check it out on the Discord channel. There's a giveaway a section right over there if you want to participate in that. But other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching the video, if you still are. And I'll be seeing y'all later. Bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh players like yourself, I would highly recommend checking out our Discord server. Link is going to be in the description as well as the QR code on screen. We do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh and the current meta, so I would really enjoy to see you there. As well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel. 
where we have three different tiers. We have Super Supporter at $2 a month, where you get loyalty badges, emojis, guaranteed comment responses, a shout out at the end of every video, as well as access to the members only Discord channel, where you get early sneak peeks at future videos. There is the Giga Supporter at $5 a month, where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up, as well as all the previous offers. And for $15 a month, we do have our final tier, which is going to be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month, as well as one hour of my time. Could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Hell Divers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot, and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye-bye.